Good evening, Golden Eagles. I am Tech Man along with my co-host, Asher Nicholson. Hey, everybody. We are here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, as our Golden Eagles are getting ready to face off against the Southeast Missouri Red Hawks. It's another OVC game. The Golden Eagles are undefeated. They are 3-0 in conference play. They are 6-1 on the season. So we've got a good game coming, especially off of last week with a shutout of the Murray State Racers at home. Yeah, that was a very exciting game to have. It was our first shutout of the season, but it was even better because it was against an OVC opponent. Um, you know, taking a look at this game, our current game a year ago, Tennessee Tech lost to Southeastern Missouri in a double overtime, 43-37. to So I'm hoping we can flip the tables, turn the tables, uh, as they say, and come away with a win here. I think so, too. And it is a cold one here tonight, folks. I can already see the players' breaths, but thankfully what we're up here in a warm box. But it looks like they are getting ready to kick it off. And let's start this presentation of the Ohio Valley Conference. So you can see everybody is bundled up today wearing long sleeves as Blake Alberts is here to kick off. And here we begin, picked up at the one. Great stop by the Golden Eagles at the 15. And the Red Hawks will start on their own 16. I like their uniforms. I do like their uniforms. Red and black always looks good. So let's see how the pass game goes on this first Man. throw. But no! He's going to be sacked by Josh Lee. Quarterback, uh, I'm guessing a little tense on that. Josh Lee going through two defenders to get to the quarterback. And you have got to not let the cold weather slow you down here. That's what I was just about to say, but that sack brings up second and 15. Let's see how the wide receivers, how they do catching the ball in such cold weather. Impact players are the quarterback and the halfback, who is to the quarterback's left. Here's the snap, quarterback waiting, he throws, and it's, oh, going to be tipped away, intended for number 87. Looks like it was almost intercepted there. It's going to go incomplete and bring up third and 15, ball on the 11. Defense, a brick wall last week against the Racers at home. Can they continue? Play action for the quarterback. He throws for the deep ball, and it is going to be caught at the 40-yard line. He powers forward to the 37. Golden Eagles that... They weren't caught napping. They had two guys on him. I think that receiver was Oh, but was there is just... a flag on the play, looks like. Well, as long as it doesn't get brought back, I think that receiver was just able to outplay them. It lo I mean, for a second there, it almost looked like uh, Christian Watson was going to come down with it, with the interception, but... Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. It's going to be unsportsmanlike on the offense. Well, what happened? I'm not sure. Did he over-celebrate? Possibly. I mean, oh. they didn't really say if it was after the play or during the play, but it looks like they're going to give him the yardage on it. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty, but still first down for the Red Hawks in their own territory now. Quarterback under center. Here's a snap. He hands it off to his halfback, who's got blocking up front, making a move. And he's he gets a good chunk of yardage. Yeah, it looks like they were trying to get rid of that penalty yardage right off the bat and he was able to chunk 11 yards off of that a great run good enough for a first down but with the penalty yardage it brings up second and 14 545 remaining in the first another handoff to the halfback and powering his way through brought down by Jaquan Coles third and seven ball on the 34 do you think they go for another play-action deep ball here? Uh, you know, I mean, it proved successful earlier in this drive. 
uh, in double coverage, actually, so they feel, I guess they feel pretty confident about it. Wide open is the receiver, but number 28, Slater Howard, is able to bring him down. That's another first down for the Red Hawks. Yeah, I think that was just some blown coverage there. You had about three guys in the area, but no one was really keeping an eye on him. And it looks like the zone coverage just didn't cover that one pocket in the middle. And so the quarterback makes a very good read, pinpoints it to his receiver, and they're able to get a first down. Southeast Missouri now on Tech's 12-yard line. They're in the red zone. Going to be a play action. Throw. Caught about a yard before the first down marker. Brings up second and two. Ball on the four. Tech's defense is reeling right now. So a seven play drive, good for 80 yards. And Southeast Missouri being stopped, but not well enough by Tech. It's gonna be a handoff to the halfback who's untouched as he goes into the end zone. Jaquan Coles chasing him down, but he wasn't able to get there. Right, taking a look at that, Jaquan Coles was the only one who had oh. a chance at getting him. He came from the left side of the line all the way around. But one man can only do so much. That's right. Everyone else was pretty much tied up. That's going to be a four-yard touchdown run by southeastern Missouri. And so here comes the kicker for the point after attempt. Here's a snap, and the kick is good. So on their first drive, Southeast Missouri goes up 7-0. And let's see if Bailey Fisher and the gang have an answer. The Tennessee Tech offense has been playing very well this season, although a few games has taken them a quarter two quarters and sometimes even three quarters to actually get started. Um, hopefully they can get a quicker start today on their first drive, maybe drum up some points, maybe even a field goal. Hopefully the cold weather doesn't have too much of an effect on them. But here we go. Looks like Quentin Cross is going to bring it out. And Tech will start their drive on the 22. Here comes Bailey Fisher. Ready to lead the charge down the field. Day Day Guest lining up to his left. Bailey Fisher drops back. He throws down the middle, and it's called by Quentin Cross. Good enough for a first down and a few extra yards. Takes them up to the 42 yard line. First down, Golden Eagles. Exactly what you want to see as you begin your drive. For Bailey Fisher is going to load up and throw, and it's caught by Dede Guess, who's got nothing ahead of him as he goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Eagles. Two throws, two catches, two plays, one touchdown. Golden Eagles are here to tie the game immediately. Yeah, well, they're just, I think they're ready to, they're ready to show up. They're, they're not playing any games. Just two <laughs> plays on that drive. Uh, I guess they're awake. We're not going to be waiting for any offense today. A slow start is not in Dwayne Alexander's vocabulary. As here comes Luke Maynard. The kick is good. And that ties it up. Two plays, 78 yards. Took 21 seconds off the clock. And we are tied at seven. Pretty good start for both teams. Yeah, both teams were able to drum up some points. Um, I mean, who knows? It may be the, the offenses that show up today and the defenses that are still sitting on the bus in the parking lot. You know, it's been a while since we've had to really worry. The last time we worried about a game was against Jacksonville State. Uh, could this be another game where we worry about, you know, the other team scoring too many points? Yeah. You know, it's it's going to be a worry for about the first quarter, but hopefully they're going to be able to get a grasp on things like they normally can. Um, but then, even if they can't, the defense can't really get the ball rolling. Um, they're still pretty, pretty consistent. And it might just come down to which defense shows up first. 
Simo begins their drive on the 21. Here's the snap. Quarterback drops back. And he's immediately met. Great job, Henry Karamu. The senior out of California. That's going to lose seven yards on the play. Second and 17. Ball on the 14. Quarterback drops back. He throws immediately. And it is batted away. That brings up third down for Simo. Yeah, I think this is a great show of force by the Tennessee Tech defense. If they can force a three in out here, that gives them the dominance they need to just continue this game. Quarterback going to throw. Dumps it off to his halfback, who's got the first down and is pushed out of bounds. I spoke too soon. He did speak too soon. And I'm noticing some similarities. Their halfback, their impact player, number 21. We have a number 21. Day Day Gist. Well, ours is better, so. I believe ours is better because ours has a touchdown. Well, so does theirs. Ours has a passing touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> but also, their kicker is number 43, just like Blake Alberts. So here's the snap. Quarterback steps back. He throws, and it is batted down by Slater Howard. Brings up second down. I think what Tech needs to do right now is they need to figure out a way to stop the Red Hawks on third down. Yeah, absolutely, they're 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 very absolutely they're very good at uh, defending on first and second downs, but it's on third downs when they're able to get those uh, bigger gains. Just I mean, just on this last third down, they were able to get almost 20 yards there. Exactly. Um, so another incomplete pass brings up third down, and here's where the Tech defense needs to step up. Look at that. Simo is 100% on third down conversions. Their halfback is in the zone. Here's the snap. Quarterback drops back. He throws out to his right, and it is caught. Not good enough for the first down. Jamal Thompson on the stop. That is fourth and five for Simo. So here comes their punter. 43, not Blake Alberts. A high snap. He's able to kick it. And here we go. The return man, Jared Howell, powering through for a few yards. And he will start the Tech offense on their own 26. We have three minutes left in the first quarter. Those stats are... A bit skewed because Tech only took two plays to get a touchdown. Yeah. It's weird seeing that numbers with both teams being tied. It's a screen pass to Demetrius Fleming, who's able to get the first down. Great design play by Coach Alexander. Great blocking out to the right. Not something you see very often by the Golden Eagles. You don't see a lot of trick plays in their book. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first screen play we've seen this season. I think so. A play action to the fullback, and another toss to Demetrius Fleming. Hurdles over one man and gets another first down. And just a pinpoint pass by Bailey Fisher. Defender in Mitri's Fleming's face. So that brings the ball to the 39. Another first down. And so far, I don't think Tech has experienced a second down. Yeah, not yet. They've been able to get first downs twice now. So Bailey Fisher under center. He drops back. All the time in the world, he throws. Demetrius Fleming, who's got another first down. Three plays, all throws. Demetrius Fleming, all first downs. And Tech is on the 25-yard line. Well, this is just... Can a continuation onto their last drive. This offense isn't taking any time in getting into this game. Showing no signs of slowing down in this cold weather. Fisher takes the snap. He drops back. He's going to fire it out. Demetrius Fleming. Maybe forward progress will give him five. It will. Second and five. 
Ball on the 20, and now unfamiliar territory for the Golden Eagles. It's second down. A full house set. Kurt Taylor Jr., Tavin Kilpatrick, Day Day Guest in the backfield. Gonna be a play action. Fisher rolls out. He's gonna fire to Tavin Kilpatrick, who's got the touchdown! Golden Eagles! Touchdown, Tavin. That's something we haven't gotten the privilege of announcing uh, very many times. A great throw and catch by Bailey Fisher to Tavin Kilpatrick. And the Golden Eagles are up 13 to 7, pending the extra point with a minute 38 left in the first. Here comes Luke Maynard. There's a snap and the kick is good. So shaving a minute and 23 off the clock, Tennessee Tech goes up 14 to seven. As our special teams will take the field, Blake Alberts will get ready to kick off again. Everybody on our special teams kind of moving their feet as much as they can, trying not to freeze up. You know, in cold weather, you rest too much. Uh, a muscle might get pulled. At, yeah, you there. have to stay moving. Because um, you don't want to have any, I really, I don't want any injuries just from... Just from being too cold. Yeah. That return will get them to the 18-yard line. And here come the Red Hawks looking to answer... The Golden Eagles charge down the field on their last drive. Yeah, and he had several first downs in a row and back-to-back -back -back completions. <laughs> Bailey Fisher, 6 of 6. So far in today's game. So second and six, ball on the 22. Quarterback drops back, throws immediately to the halfback, who's a few yards short of the first down. That's third down and second. That's third down and two. Clock winding down. We are within a minute left in the first quarter. Wide receivers all out. Halfback lining up in the backfield. Quarterback under center. He's going to play action. Ooh. And batted down by number 30, Clay Mazengill. Looked like Jared Howell was in on the pressure that made the quarterback make a decision that he didn't want to. So that brings up fourth and two. And here comes the punter. Jared Howell getting ready to receive. Here's the punt. Kind of a short kick. And Jared Howell will gain about five on that return. Jared's unable to put on the moves there. It's just too cold. <laughs> so the Golden Eagles will start 33 seconds left in the first on their own 38. Full house set for Fisher, who tosses it to Day Day Gist, who might be looking to throw. Wow! A deep ball! Oh! Intended for Quentin Cross, who was in double coverage. I don't blame Day Day Gist for that. That was a design play that worked all the time in practice. But he doesn't really have to think a lot, like, oh, I need to throw this ball away. Because yeah. that, that was dangerously close to being intercepted. But that thought just doesn't come to a man who doesn't throw a lot. But, and so cold setting in for the Golden Eagles. This is their first third down as that pass to Day Day Gist goes incomplete. It's going to be Bailey Fisher's first incomplete pass on the day. So third and ten, ball on the 38.
There's a snap. Fisher has got all the time in the world. He throws. Demetrius Fleming, who will not get to the first down marker. That brings up fourth and three. It's going to be Tennessee Tech's first drive where they've been stopped. And so, yeah, here comes Blake Alberts for the first time. And here's the punt. It's a high one. And it's wisely going to be fair caught at about the 16-yard line. And that will be the end of the first quarter. Good game on both sides of the football field. Golden Eagles are up 14-7. to A great showing uh, for Bailey Fisher and the gang. Two drives... They were unstoppable. Only that last one where they stopped, but I think that's just the cold setting in. It is it is dark, and the wind is blowing pretty hard out there. Yeah, it's definitely making for a, a chilling setting, uh, but I'm really glad that this offense was able to show up uh, instead of having to wait uh, even a quarter or even a couple drives. They showed up immediately, and the defense is out there playing the ball, and they're doing a great job. So uh, let's see what we can get, get into with the rest of this game. Right now, it's looking to be a close game. Hopefully, it doesn't go into overtime like last time because we were unfortunate in that situation. But it looks like SEMO is ready to start their drive and begin the second quarter. Looks like their halfback is in the zone. And they will start on their own 17. It's going to be a handoff to the halfback. Blocking up front, but only able to gain about four yards. Slater Howard with the tackle. So second and five, ball on the 22. And the fall weather is officially hitting us here. Quarterback is going to run for it. Picks up about three. I think that may have been a design quarterback run. I think so. He he really did sell that he was going to throw it. So Simo now three for five on third down conversions. Looks like they might have a hole up the middle if they want to run, which they go with play action. And it's going to be caught by their wide receiver, and I don't know what just happened there, but looks like nobody's going to get to him. Come on! Oh, that is a touchdown Let's for the Red Hawks. Look at that one more time. I think it looked like the Tech defenders ran into each other. Yeah, I think that was both of the safeties back there. Oh, they just got hung up on each other, and it looks like Bryson Tolly was unable to catch up. And so, pending the extra point, this game is tied up again. A 75-yard touchdown pass for the Red Hawks. That's something you hate to see. I mean, it, you can't really, I guess, train for it, I guess, when you accidentally run into another player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Especially your, one of your teammates. Um, they don't tend to run those situations in practice. Yeah. <laughs> That's just something you're unfortunate enough to be put on a highlight reel. Bad thing is, it's not your highlight reel. Yeah, not, a, <laughs> not the best situation to be in. So we are tied up here in Cape Girardeau. Tennessee Tech ready to receive the ball. It's a good game here in Missouri. Yeah, it's a close game, and it's a close game without having the stress of being a close game. A couple of our past games have been nail, nail biters. The, the case with Jacksonville State, it was bad play on both sides of the ball. But this is good play. Here's Quentin Cross to return. Somehow... For some reason, Coach Alexander has substituted Demetrius Fleming with Quentin Cross as the return man. Yeah, I think this is his first game as the return man, and he seems to be pretty successful with it. Which, you may have him be your return man so Demetrius Fleming can do what he did on the second drive. It's going to be a toss and another throw. Oh, Complete. so close. Intended for Demetrius Fleming, who, as I was saying... They might have taken him off as kick returner, one for the injury, and he is our impact wide receiver. But they may have saved him to keep him loosened up when he needs to receive. Play action. Toss to Metrius Fleming, who will pick up the first down. That is seven first downs for Tennessee Tech today. Looking back at that, that halfback pass by Diddy Guess, I was surprised that 
they were willing to call it a second time with back-to-back -back drives, you know. Normally, that's, some, that's something you don't really see. That's something you're pulling out of the bag of tricks. You, you normally wouldn't try it on back-to-back -back drives, but especially it, if it didn't work. Yeah, but it almost worked there. The throw was just a little low and in front of Metrius Fleming, who had to slide for it. This handoff to Day-Day Gist sheds one tackle and drags a man down to the ground with him as he picks up a yard. So second and nine, ball on the 48. Betty gets to the right of Bailey Fisher. He drops back and throws to his right, and it is caught by Metrius Fleming, who may have gotten the first down. No, they're going to say third and inches. <laughs> I love these line judges. <laughs> I think he breathed on him a little too hard. <laughs> these men are like paper on the field. Yeah, that was a great matchup on the outside with Demetrius Fleming that stands at about six foot. Everybody is on the field. Demetrius Fleming in motion. Everybody on the line. It's going to be a battle for that inch. Hand off to Kurt Taylor Jr., who powers forward for two yards and picks up the first down. Old reliable Kurt Taylor Jr. That brings up first and ten. Ball on the 41. We are just under five minutes left in the first half. But Kurt Taylor Jr., the junior out of Covington, Georgia, always there to do his part for the Golden Eagles. Bailey Fisher throws to his right, intended for Tavin Kilpatrick, who was on the line of scrimmage, unable to bring it down. And that brings up second and ten. <laughs> Lord Almighty. Yeah, so Tavin Kilpatrick is lining up to the left now. Maybe that'll help. It's going to be a handoff to Day Day Gist, who's got. Oh. Number 50, Kurt Huff kind of just blew his blocking assignment there. Unable to hold his block, and that holds Day Day Gist to only a two yard run, which looked like it could have gone for much longer because he had blocking up front by Tavin. Kilpatrick, the tight end from Tennessee Tech. So here's the snap. Fisher looking. He throws. Oh, Ooh. almost intercepted. It was in the hands of number 14 of SEMO, but, you know, sometimes when you try to tuck in the ball, you force it into your body, and it just ejects it out of your hands. Looks like they're going for it here on fourth down. Golden Eagles are going for it. Everybody put your wings up. Fisher drops back. He's going to run for it. He's got oh! He's, He's got the first down. Bailey Fisher running for it. And that's first and 10. Ball on the 31 for the Golden Eagles. Very dangerous. Bailey Fisher could have gotten hurt on that play. He had nobody blocking in front of him. He just put the ball in his own hands. And picks up the first down for Tennessee Tech. Coach Alexander has just weird times that he just decides to go for fourth downs. Like, that was fourth and eight. The last time that it was very... Well, that was very odd. Mitra's pass intended for Mitra's Fleming. Uh, wide open, just kind of drop it with his hands. But back to that fourth and eight conversion, you know, it... The, I mean, you want to get some points on the... More points on the board, but there wasn't a need to go for it there. And that goes back to that other time that he went for it on 4th and 9, but then didn't go for it on 4th and 3. Exactly. Bailey Fisher rushing for it again. Dives forward, maybe a yard short of the first down marker. Call him two yards short. 3rd and 2, ball on the 23. Tech, not the best on 3rd down efficiency today, but... Looks like they are in the jumbo set. Maybe another fullback dive by Kurt Taylor Jr. There's a snap. It's going to be a play action. It's blown up immediately, and Fisher is well, sacked. There's a, flag. there's a face mask. It's going to be face mask on the defense. And that will pick up a first down for the Golden Eagles. And, it'll, hey, you, you're getting a little too close. I, I saw that man, uh, their head coach, pull out a $5 bill. Yeah. <laughs> Got to watch it. When it comes to bribery in the... 
College football, I'm not really an expert, but <laughs> you can't do that. You cannot do that. And play action. Fires for Tavin Kilpatrick, who the first gets down the first a little down. More. Ooh, gonna, a little stutter step makes a man miss. It's going to come down right around the two-yard line. It's going to be first and goal. Tavin Kilpatrick with the moves. So first and goal for the Golden Eagles. Redemption after that face mask call that would have brought... Would have brought on fourth down and a field goal attempt. Daddy Gist in motion. Fisher drops back and throws immediately. Ooh, intended for Ethan Cobb, who cannot believe he was unable to catch that, but it looked like it was blocked. So don't be too hard on yourself, Ethan. You see that tree, Ethan? <laughs> Go get me a leaf. <laughs> So Kurt Taylor Jr. and Dade Guest lining up behind Bailey Fisher. It's gonna be a handoff to Dade Guest who fights forward for a yard. Very close to the goal line. They just need one more yard. Now this is the point you have the option to either go for a play action, toss it over the top, or maybe do a halfback toss, run it to the outside, get around that defensive line. Fleming in motion. Reinforces the right. Here's the snap. It's a handoff to Data gets to the left, who's met behind the line. That'll lose them a yard and bring up fourth down. Trying to stay limber and warm out there. If that was a celebration. I don't want to see what his workout looks like. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, look at me. I'm doing a push-up. <laughs> but here comes Luke Maynard to put the Golden Eagles ahead. Wings up, everybody. It's a 19-yard attempt. A little jumpy on defense. Snap. Hold. Kick. And it is good. good. The Golden Eagles go up 17-14. After that goal line stand by the Red Hawks. We've got a good game going on here. Yeah, absolutely. The offense is playing really well. Um, we've got all aspects of the offense. We've got tight ends making catches. We've got wide receivers making catches. We've got decent uh, running back contributions as well. By both our fullback and our halfback and by Bailey Fisher. Yeah, he's been able to get out of the pocket and, and get some decent amount of yardage. Yeah. So it's going to be returned from the end zone. Able to make... Oh, my goodness! Took down about three people on that play. S stiff arming everybody to get to the 16-yard line. He might as well have just stayed. Yeah, he lost four yards from where he would have been if he had ultimately just taken a knee. So ball on the 16, Red Hawks have a minute 37 to score. And their halfback is going to be brought down by two Golden Eagles, four yards short of the first down. Southeastern South Missouri is going to call their first timeout of the half with a minute and 32 left. It's a great game that brings legitimacy to the Golden Eagles. If they're able to beat another OVC opponent they were in the running to go to the championship tournament. Yeah, postseason play is always a goal. That pass batted away by Michael Scavo. So third down for the Red Hawks. They're pretty good on third down. Here's the quarterback. He throws. Ooh. Batted away at the line. Looked like he hit one of his own players in the helmet. So that's fourth down and four. And it looks like they're bringing out their punt team. I'm not sure why he was aiming for the lineman. That's an ineligible receiver. <laughs> so Jared Howell, the reliable return man for the Golden Eagles. He's going to take this one. Again, unable to put on the moves. I'm not sure if it's the weather or if this uh, Red Hawk special teams is just getting to him. 
I, I think it's just good tackling by the Red Hawks. So ball on the 37. That's where Bailey Fisher and his team will take over. So here's the snap. Fisher drops back. He throws to his left. It's caught by Bradley Clark. And Tech will take their first timeout after a five-yard gain. But as I was saying earlier, shutouts are amazing against Murray State, but anybody looking on to that game might just say, oh, it was just an off day for Murray State. But if you're able to continuously win, it shows that you're the real deal. And Bailey Fisher showing he's the real deal with this oh, overthrown. overthrown pass. <laughs> hey, he was looking for the deep ball, and there was only one defender Pass just overthrown a little bit. But that brings up third and five for the Golden Eagles. Who have only converted on two third downs out of five. Here's the snap. Haley Fisher rolls to his right, back to his left. Attempted to run for it too late, but that's going to be a sack for Simo, who takes their second timeout and it looked like the defense was just too good they locked up all the receivers Bailey Fisher decided to run for it but it was too late the defender was already there yeah you could see him going through his progressions and I guess nobody was open uh, we couldn't really get a good angle on the other half of the field but by the time he was able to look down uh, at the pocket it was already collapsed and there was nowhere for him to go so here comes Blake Alberts to punt Here's the punt, a, a beam to the 10 yard line. And their returner is brought down at about the 18 yard line. Simo has one timeout left. They're down three, 54 seconds left. And Tech's defense really needs to show up if they want to have a lead at halftime. Yeah, I think it'd be good on their spirits going into the locker room at halftime being up. I mean, it's only by a field goal, but hey, we've got two more quarters. We can finish settling this out. Ho, ho, ho. That play action almost proved disastrous as two Tech defenders were able to bat the ball down, and it was almost caught by Jaquan Coles, but he was already looking towards the end zone, trying to run it forward, and you take your eyes off the ball, and that makes you drop it. Quarterback drops back. And batted bat it down, down again. again. Golden Eagles not letting anything pass the line of scrimmage. That brings up third and ten, but it does stop the clock. 48 seconds left in the first half. Four for seven on third down conversions. Here's the snap. It's a handoff to the halfback who's got a lane and he's got the first down. And everybody's hurrying back to the line. Game clock under 40 seconds now. Another handoff to the halfback. Makes a move and this one's a not going anywhere. No, only gained three yards. And they are not taking their last time out. I think they're hurrying it up so that Jaquan Coles can't get on the field and disrupt anything. He's breaking through. It's a fumble. As and it covered. is picked up. Bryson Tolley. Bryson Tolley again forcing a turnover. Great job, Golden Eagles. They have the ball on the 45. 18 seconds left. Two timeouts. I say you go for more points here. Yeah, absolutely. Just see if you can increase this uh, lead. Go into the locker room feeling even better than you were before, but this is a great time to show up from last week's player of the game who had uh, a pick six on the day. Christian Watson with the forced fumble. That was, uh, that was a hard hit. I felt it up here. So first and 10, ball on CMOS 45. Two timeouts, you've got all the time in the world. Demetrius Fleming is in the zone. Bailey Fisher drops back. He's 
able to get it out, but the pressure was too much for him to be able to throw it. Second and ten. Ball on the 45. You would like to see more points on the board, even if it's just a field goal. Because more points is always better. That's how you win games. Sun Tzu said that. You did? Yep. In the art of football. Fisher fires to his right. It's caught by Tavin Kilpatrick, who is pushed out of bounds at the 39. As he steamrolls over a line judge. Third and four. They are just outside of field goal territory. Maybe able to get one playoff and take a timeout. Fisher drops back, taking his time, and he's sacked. You just throw it away at that point. And they don't seem like they're calling a timeout. Well, now they are. Ta Why? I would have just let the clock run out. At this just point. let You're the clock run out and end the half. Oh, are they going to go for a field goal? If they go for this, I'm going to scream. What are you doing? It's 4th and 11. All right, everybody. Wings up. Let's, let's see what the Golden Eagles can do here. Everybody out. Bailey Fisher drops back. Way back. And he's... It, and they turn it over line, on downs. This offensive line just cannot handle this pass rush. All like, you're doing is giving Simo an opportunity to get ahead if they do a Hail Mary throw here. A very weird, gutsy call by Coach Alexander. Simo has the ball on their own 46. Quarterback drops back. And he's going to be sacked. And... Jamal Thompson records his first sack and takes us into halftime. Golden Eagles are up 17 to 14 after a very weird final 20 seconds of that half. I'm still trying to do the math in my head as to why that makes sense. <laughs> but the most important math is we are up three points. Yeah, that's all that really matters. Uh, whether they made a strange game plan decision at the end of the first half is... <laughs> Not our business. Uh, <laughs> but this first half has been very productive. The offense and the defense have uh, shown up. The only part of the ball that hasn't showed up is special teams. And that, I mean, we've had uh, a field goal made. Um, but as for punt returns... Um, yeah, Jared Howell not able to get anything going. But I think that's just good blocking on the Red Hawks part. And you never know... Maybe he breaks one. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe they switch out who the returner is. We have seen Metrius Fleming take a few punt returns. He did have a punt return for a touchdown against Jacksonville State. So you never know what's going to happen, but it looks like everybody is finally coming out of the locker rooms, and I think Tech will receive the ball this time. They should, yeah. Uh, Simo was able to give us the kickoff so we should be able to start maybe that was the game plan they were gonna get sacked and then not run out the clock <laughs> and then get the ball back i don't know <laughs> do they go for an onside kick here yeah. at the beginning of the half <laughs> pull a new orleans or, i don't know but let's see what the red hawks and the golden eagles have cooked up here it's a battle of the birds here in missouri simo is here to kick off after a very hard-fought first half of this game. They're kicker taking their time. Hey, this isn't Sunday, man. Man, that coffee really helped you, didn't it? I don't know, man. I, Folks, I don't know if you can see this at home, but I've literally yawned every 30 <laughs> seconds. Every time I speak, Asher yawns. <laughs> I, drank, I had a whole coffee before this started. But here comes their kicker, here to wake us up. They don't have a cannon here. Oh, it took him long enough. I, was, I, was, I almost <laughs> had time to take a nap. Uh, it's going to be Quentin Cross on the return. He brings it out to the 20. Call it the 21. So here comes Bailey Fisher again. And look at those stats. It's a close game, folks. Time of possession and yardage are very similar. 
Which is calling an audible at the line. A toss to Day Day Gist. Uh, another throw. Play. Here we go. Make it oh, he he it up. And it works. And they get across midfield. Well, third time's the try, I guess. <laughs> <and> he <laughs> didn't want to give up on that play. Look at that. Great throw by Day Day Gist. Great catch and run by Metrius Fleming. Picks up the first down. And takes us to the 45-yard line. Yeah, I, I bet at halftime, Day Day Guest went to the locker room and was begging Coach Alexander. He's like, please. <laughs> he grabbed him by the shirt and the whistle was like, <laughs> let me run that play again. <laughs> Give me one more chance and I promise we can come up with some yardage. And they did. It was successful and that's good to see. Day Day Guest show here. <laughs> had the first touchdown and now that wonderful throw to Metrius Fleming. Fisher drops back. Throws and hit. Caught by Metrius Fleming. Oh, out no. Out of bounds. His defender fell flat on his face, and he could have gone for a lot more yards than what he got. His momentum carried him forward. He was unable to plant his feet. That could have been a big one. But it does pick up a first down. I guess I guess we shouldn't really be complaining. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> it did get a first down. <laughs> first and ten, ball on the 33. Handoff to Day Day Gist, good for about two. So Bailey Fisher drops back, throws, and it is caught by Quentin Cross, who's able to get the first down. The ball on the 19, another first down for the Golden Eagles. Golden Eagles have always scored when they got to the red zone. Bailey Fisher is in the zone. Dede gets to his left. It's a direct snap to Dede Gis, who's running for it. And it comes about a yard short of the first down. More trickery by the Golden Eagles today. I was watching Bailey Fisher for this. I was, I had my eyes on him only. And for a second there, I thought I was having a stroke. I couldn't tell what was going on because the camera was moving and Bailey Fisher was not. And then you said direct snap, and I then I was able to focus back in. But I was not ready for that. And I don't think the Red Hawks were either. Fisher takes the ball. He's going to run for it now. And he's got it. He's got a lane. Going to the end zone. And he's, he's got, got a it. touchdown. Sheds a tackle. Number 26 swinging off of him as he goes into the end zone. Great blocking up front by number 52, Trevor Stevens, taking on about four guys. So a great run by Bailey Fisher. Puts the Golden Eagles up 23-14, to 14, pending the extra point by Luke Maynard, who is perfect on the day. Six plays, 79 yards, and the Golden Eagles are up 10 points. You know... Coach Alexander in the past in the past games has been kind of slow to pull out the bag of tricks, but today's game <laughs> he's letting everything loose. <laughs> he just today. dumped it out. Like ah, let's see what we got here. Took out the suggestion box and really <laughs> special. <laughs> so here's Blake Alberts to kick it off. Booming kick down the field in the end zone, and he's gonna wisely finally take a knee. Tech up three minutes in time of possession. That's what you like to see. Absolutely. We're up 10 points, and I can't, you can't really complain about anything because everything's going right. Exactly. So SEMO will begin their drive on their own 20. 522 left in the third. A handoff to the halfback. Powers forward about seven or eight yards. Second and three, ball on the 27, brought down by Jamal Thompson, the junior out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. So we are crossing the five minute mark in the third. Bunch set to the right. 
Ooh. Um, whoa! Jaquan Coles not letting any trickery get past him. Oh my goodness, that, that was, was a, a lightning bolt. That was a, uh, looked like a wide receiver jet sweep. And Jaquan Coles was tackling him as he was handed the ball. <laughs> Quarterback going to run with it. Ooh. Ooh, a stiff arm, and he's able to get the first down. Poor Clay Mazingill, yeah. unable to bring him down, and is sadly put on a highlight reel. <laughs> yeah, the quarterbacks, at least uh, for Sino, haven't been too terribly mobile today. Mm -hmm. Bailey Fish has been able to make some runs, but I think that's one of the first couple of runs that the quarterback has had. That was just a run by necessity. And, oh, it's going to be caught. Seth Carlisle was the original defender. I think he slipped on the turf. Yeah. Overcommitted. That was that was the word I was looking for. Uh, I was having a stroke. I was like, what is that word? Looks like he overcommitted <laughs> on that play. Well, that brings up second and two. Quarterback drops back, throws, intended for the halfback. He did not allow his player to run the route before he threw the ball. So well, that's incomplete. It didn't help that you had Jaquan Coles and the rest of the defensive line coming for your head. <laughs> so third and two. Jumbo set for the Red Hawks. Toss to the halfback, who's going to be blown up behind the line by Clay Mazengill. Yeah, he's had enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that stiff arm <laughs> lit a fire under him, so he's staying warm tonight. That's fourth down for the Red Hawks as their punter comes to transfer it over to Jared Howell. Let's see if Jared Howell can finally get something going on the return game. A high kick, and he's going to have to fair catch it at the 16-yard line. So here comes Bailey Fisher, who will start the drive on Tech's 16-yard line. It's going to be a handoff to Day Day Gist. Runs directly into a linebacker, but he's able to get five yards on the play. Call it four. <laughs> Speaking of four. Um, Anybody see Tom Brady last week, last uh, Thursday night, who didn't know what down it was? Uh, age is going to catch up to you at some point. That was a late hit on Bailey Fisher. But you could say that the defender was already committed to the tackle. He hit Fisher in the legs. Um, I'm surprised that's not a flag right there. Well, you know, the refs just hate us. So Refs do hate Tennessee Tech. It is the Golden Eagles versus the world. Fisher drops back. He's going to run for it. Oh, Ooh, tripped by his shoelaces. It. And that brings up fourth and two. Amazingly, Bailey Fisher... Only has 13 yards rushing. May sack again, sacks account for that, but still with the runs that he's had and the touchdown run, I guess they were short enough. But Blake Alberts on to punt. Great kick. Off at the 30, and he's not able to get anything. He that. thought he was going to have room to return, but then five Golden Eagles <laughs> were right there on his throat. So. They will start their drive on the 34. Good defensive hold by the Red Hawks. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Quarterback drops back. He's going to run for it. Met at the line. Nothing's getting past Michael Scavo. So second and 10, ball on the 34, and the clock will keep rolling. That is a tiny, tiny person. Number two on their team. Did you see that? Ne next time they show their huddle, look at him compared to the rest of the players. <laughs> Quarterback is in the zone. Takes a snap. He's going to run for it again. And pick up about three. He keeps running it. 
I, I'm pretty sure he wants to be a... See, I look at number that. two. He's yeah. so tiny. Well, earlier I said he wasn't very mobile, and I guess he heard me. And he's, <laughs> he, I guess he had enough of it, because... <laughs> maybe maybe you should quit talking about that. I guess I should. Because that's twice on today's. <laughs> yeah. Intercepted! And he's going to the 20 to the 15 yard line. Jamal Thompson. Five tackles, a sack, and now an interception. Good job, Jamal Thompson. Flipping the field for the Golden Eagles. And he read that route before the wide receiver could get there. So Bailey Fisher and the gang have the ball already in the red zone. What I love about this defense is that we're not always calling the same names over and over again. We're Everybody calling... contributes. Yeah, it's... And here comes Bailey Fisher to add his part. Ooh. Looked like he was going for a stiff arm there, but he was already going in for the tackle. <laughs> so that'll pick up seven. Brings up second and three, ball on the seven. Hard to stiff arm when he's tackling your legs. Still, Golden Eagles perfect in the red zone. Always finding points when they get here. Tavin Kilpatrick to the right, Ethan Cobb to the left. Fisher drops back, he's gonna run for it again. Picks up the first down. That's 16 first downs for the Golden Eagles. Amazing stat. Yeah, they've got over half of... SEMO has under half of what Tennessee Tech has in terms of first downs. Right. and um, I mean, uh, they're only down by 10 points. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's just how much of a difference it actually makes when it comes down to it. Over first downs means you're moving the ball easier. And right here, Day Day Giss! Touchdown, Day Day Giss. Raising the roof. A great lane opened up for Day Day Gist, howling at the moon, pumping it up, and that's a three yard touchdown run for the Golden Eagles. I'm not sure what Tavin was doing on that play. Because it looked like he was pulling, but he almost tackled. <laughs> <laughs> so, with 49 seconds left in the third quarter, Tech is up 30 to 14, pending the extra point. We've got 49 seconds in this third quarter. This game is rolling right along. And the kick is good. So Tech is up 31 to 14. So Blake Alberts will come to kick it off to the Red Hawks once again. Good revenge story for the Golden Eagles here. They had a heart-wrenching loss last year against SEMO. Came off a missed field goal by Hadar Zayden. But here's the kickoff. Fielded in the end zone. He's bringing it out to 20. Brought down about the 23 or 24. Red Hawks will start their drive on the 24 yard line. Jaquan Coles is in the zone. Halfback gets the ball, powers forward for about five yards. And we are comparing the halfback <laughs> to the quarterback stats of Bailey Fisher's rush game. They both have a touchdown today. <laughs> So second and four, ball on the 30. 23 seconds left in the third. Handoff to the halfback, who's picking up the first down. We've got 17 seconds left. We've got 18, 17. I think SEMO wants to take this opportunity to run another play to save all the time that they can. Here's a snap, a jet sweep. Uh, wow, that looked like it was trying to be a toss play, but he just saw the lane and he, he opened up against Jared Howell. Yeah, that was the jet sweep play that, uh, that Jaquan Coles blew up. Yeah, so he was unable to, to stop it in the backfield this time, but that's going to bring us to the end of the third quarter. 
So Golden Eagles are up 31 to 14. We've got seven minutes left in this game. And even though we're up by so much, I still feel like it's anybody's game here. Yeah, I feel confident in both our defense and our offense to be able to, to continue scoring points and to stop the other team from scoring points. But, you know, there's always just that element of football that you can't you can't predict. Like with the first drive for the Red Hawks, they were on, what, third and 24, and they flipped it uh, to a 50-yard pass down the field. So just one play, any slip-up by Tech, you kind of have to be perfect for the rest of this game if you want to hold on to this lead and win. But they have flipped to the field, and the Red Hawks are going to see if they can do just that. Ball on the 46 in Tech territory. First and 10. Clay Mazengill sees something. Quarterback throwing to his left. Wow. Went right through a Tech defender. I don't know how yeah, that ball was caught. He was directly in between them. I'm not sure. I don't think they're going to show us a replay, but... It's was... just, maybe it was one of those things, it was such a quick play, the defender didn't really know what was happening. By the time he did, the ball was already past him. Yeah. Down, That's second down. and one. Hot. It's going to be a play action and a throw deep down the field, batted, batted away. Intended for number two, the tiny man from Cape Girardeau. <laughs> Jamal Thompson was able to get the uh, Jamal Thompson was able to force the incompletion there. So that brings up third and one. I'm not sure they should have gone with play action. I'm sure a run would have done just fine for them. Jake One Coles is in the zone. Here's the snap and a throw intercepted, intercepted by Jared Howell, and, and here three. he goes. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Jared Howell. Forget about punt returns. How about a pick six for the man with glue on his hands? Jared Howell. A 72-yard pick six. And it looked like the Red Hawks were knocking on the door of the Golden Eagles. But Jared Howell had other plans. You know, that's the... Uh... That play was very similar to the last play that he threw an interception on. It was an out route, and the Tech defenders were just able to beat the receiver to the route both times. Um, Jamal Thompson and Jared Howe, all they had to do was curl in and look. So, if I were Simo, I would be thinking of not throwing it to an out route on the left side of the field. <laughs> Hasn't worked out a lot. But... You never know. Third time may be the charm. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Just like Dady Giss throwing Demetrius Fleming. But with 42 seconds passing in the fourth quarter, there comes Blake Alberts kicking off after that Tech touchdown. Now, if you're Southeast, if you're Southeast Missouri, you have to get a touchdown on this drive. You do. You can't settle for a field goal, and you definitely can't settle for punting. As much as a Tech fan as I am, I'm also a football fan, and I like to see teams at least try to succeed. But they got they have to score a touchdown on this drive if they want to stay in this game. Fielded in the end zone, but he doesn't take a knee. That's going to cost them two yards as the Red Hawks will start on the 18-yard line. Wide receivers all out, halfback on the left hip of the quarterback. Snap. It's going to be a handoff to the halfback, who's met immediately behind the line by Josh Lee. And so that's second and 11, and the clock is winding down. We're passing six minutes. The halfback is out in a wide receiver position. And, and he's sacked by Seth Carlisle. That's third and 13. Great job, Golden Eagles, on defense. Now all you have to do is hold. Hold the Red Hawks here. Just our front four are amazing on defense. Yeah. And generally, they're not rushing any more than four. No. It, it shows great defense when you can rush four and 
always get to the quarterback and hurry him. So, quarterback drops back. He throws. Oh, almost intercepted by Clay Mazingill. And oh, that's 4th and 13. Yeah, this is exactly what Tech wants. Just Now what they need to do when Tech gets this ball is just run this clock out. But knowing the Tennessee Tech team that has played in this season so far, <laughs> they're going to try to throw a 75-yard touchdown pass for no reason. From his own goal line, it gets to the 40. And Jared Howell is able to bring it close to midfield. Right on the Right on midfield. He's able to reach forward for that extra yard. So first and ten, ball on the fifty. That's a that's a generous fifty. It's the forty-nine and a half yard line. <laughs> Bailey Fisher gonna hand off to Dady Gist. Ooh, wow! Oh, man, over. Powerful 72. running. And he injured him. Oh my goodness. Looks like he hit his head on the fall. Defensive tackle number seventy everybody's falling on the field. <laughs> But number 72, the defensive tackle, met Day-Day Gist for a loss of about three. And Day-Day just shoved him to the ground, and he ended up injuring his head. So hopefully he's okay. That run, good for six. Bailey Fisher in the zone. Drops back, throws immediately. Intended for Quentin Cross. That's incomplete. Take a look at those stats. They've thrown... They've thrown equal passes, but Maybe. Bailey Fisher able to complete just four more than Simo's quarterback. Third down efficiency. Simo about at half, but Tech just a 25% mark. Fisher drops back. He's going to roll out. Oh, Stiff arms his way. Fires across the middle. Tevin Kilpatrick! He's patting his chest and saying it's on him, and it definitely is. Oh, my. Bailey Fisher just put everything he had into that play to stiff arm a man off of him and to throw across the body. And then Tavin just dropped it. So that brings Blake Alberts to punt. A line drive kick, fair caught. Ooh. It's gonna it almost get... was an amazing special teams play by Quentin Cross. Who decided to high-five the ball instead of catch it at the one-yard line. So Simo will start <laughs> on the 20. <laughs> Good play, man. <laughs> and it's going to be caught by the halfback who's got a running lane. The referee is blocking going. for him, and he's still going. Nobody's going to catch up to him, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Red Hawks. Are the refs allowed to... Christian Watson, oh, the head coach is calling for two, but look at this. The ref was in the way of all of the Tech defenders. That is ridiculous. <laughs> He's blocking for them. Uh, Slater Howard and Christian Watson and Jared Howell were unable to catch up. That knocks six points on the board for the Red Hawks. Clay Mazingill expecting to catch the ball. And we're just going to see this replay all night, folks. A conga line following him to the end zone. And their head coach did signal for two. And look at that. Their quarterback is out on the field. It's a two-point conversion. Tech needs this stop. Big dog, big dog. Quarterback audibling at the line. Here's the snap. He's... He's, he's looking. He's, he's going to be sacked. And the two-point conversion has failed. He should have just committed and ran for it. Yeah, he probably would have gotten it. But uh, Yeah, nobody was near him. But he was just too ready to throw the ball. And the two-point conversion fails. So that is going to leave the score 38-20 to 20 in favor of Tech. And it looks like they're going for an onside kick. Tech receivers are, are ready for it. So here we go, folks. This is the nitty-gritty of a game. You love to see it be this close. Now it's on to Tech to prove they've got what it takes. Going to be picked up by Mitrius Fleming, who's going to be tackled at about the 38-yard line. 
It was an onside kick that turned into a squib. Uh, weird, weird decision, but I understand it. So, uh, taking a look back at uh, defensive tackle number 72. It's going to be out for the rest of the game. With a pinched nerve. I guess maybe it could have been something in his neck somewhere. Maybe. So Fisher's going to he's got keep it. the ball, and he's, he's powering forward, shedding tackles. That is going to bring up second and one ball on the 48. And if they can just keep doing that for the rest of the night, they could drain the whole clock out on this drive. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's, that's the only thing needs, that needs to be done here, especially with the Red Hawks on the rise and trying to get points. Um, there's no reason to give them the ball any more than you have to. He fires it out to Justin Odin, who brings it down and picks up the first down. That'll put the ball on the 46. And unlike last week, we're not seeing the second stringers out here. Yeah, we don't have the lead we did last week. And I hate to say it, but our buddy Willie is not ready for this kind of situation <laughs> just yet. That run by Day Day Gist will pick up a yard, but you do not have the luxury to put in your backups and trust that they can hold on to this game, seeing that your first stringers are still having to put up everything to stop the Red Hawks. So second and nine, ball on the 45. Fisher is going to hold it, and he's going to pick up about two yards on that run. So. It wasn't a big gain, but we're just chipping away at this clock. That's the only objective. There's no need to score any more points. There's no need to run any trick plays. Coach Alexander, if you're listening, don't run any more trick plays. There's no need. <laughs> just just keep, keep the clock running. Just keep running the ball. Um, earlier, we had the gain by Justin Odin. Uh it was a first down, but it stopped the clock. Because so, he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, it was it was good we gained the yardage, but it was also counterintuitive at the same time. Bailey Fisher turning all the way around. A kickball played by the secondary of SEMO. And here comes Blake Alberts to punt. His fifth punt of the day. Two kicks, two punts inside the 20, and a long of 50 yards. So here's the punt. It's going to be fair caught. But it's going to hit the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. So okay. So they will start their drive at the 20-yard line. Tech defense really needs to step up. Three minutes left in this game. Their quarterback is in the zone. It's a cold one here. In Missouri. And it's going to be intercepted. And he's going to bring it for a pick six. Jamal Thompson. His second interception on today's game. He wasn't happy with just one interception. He wanted a pick six. He was not going to get shown up by Jared Howell. Great job, Jamal Thompson. I think we've got a contender for the player of the game right there. Everybody. I think they've, they've started to watch our broadcast. And they want to be the player of the game. And that's what you love to see. Every Golden Eagle putting in work. And here comes Luke Maynard to do his part. The kick is good. Golden Eagles are up 45-20 to 20 with three minutes left in the game. That's exactly what you want to see. As the folks say back home, you love to see it. Everybody dancing and jiving as Blake Alberts gets ready to kick this off. Golden Eagles are up 45 to 20. And here we go into the last three minutes of this game. Fielded at the one. He's running past the 20 to the 23 or 24. So 258 left in the game. Red Hawks, I don't know if they're still committed to trying to win this game. 
Let's see what they've got cooked up for the Golden Eagle defense. Quarterback drops back, throws, Ooh. and through the fingertips of his receiver, who hasn't been targeted a lot tonight, so I'm guessing the cold is just setting in on his hands. So I'm able to bring it down. It doesn't sound like the crowd's too happy about that one. Oh, no, oh, they are not. You never, ever want to see your team get beat at home. Quarterback drops back again. He fires again. Same spot, but this one is overthrown, and it goes incomplete. Six for 13 on third down conversions. Quarterback drops back. He's firing down the field. Ooh, Ooh almost intercepted. And that brings up fourth down. Do the Red Hawks go for it? They, they're bringing out their punter. So unless they've got a trick up their sleeves, this one's going to Jared Howell. Here's the punt. A high kick. Caught by Jared Howell who rolls out to the right. And, and it looks like the crowd at SEMO is ready to get out of here. Did you see that? Yeah, their like shirts were going through their jackets. Oh, but also, like, you could see where the the prop uh -huh. ended, and the dude was just like walking, and he fell off because it didn't register the prop anymore. Oh no, I didn't see that. <laughs> Remind me, what is that? Two forty. Two forty minutes. So Kurt Taylor Jr. powering forward for the first down. He's putting in his part to put this game away. The name of the game is Chew the Clock. Chew the Clock, Chew the Clock, Chew the Clock, so we can come away with this win. Golden Eagles up 45-20, to 20, under 2.30 left in the game. Bailey Fisher under center, letting the play clock wind down. Maybe he'll take it to two and then snap the ball. Exactly what he'll do, and he'll hand it off again to Kurt Taylor Jr. He's got the first down. Another first down. Two handoffs to Kurt Taylor Jr. Both result in a first down. And those workouts are paying off for the junior out of Covington, Georgia. And look at that. They are at the 31-yard line, creeping in on the red zone. Bailey Fisher in the zone. And we are within two minutes of this game, folks. Golden Eagles bleeding the clock. Hand off to Day Day Giss. Kurt, Kurt Taylor, Taylor Jr. Jr. unable to get to the blocking in time. The defender sheds him and stops Day Day Giss for a gain of two. But that keeps the clock rolling. And you maybe want to see a second down or third down here. You don't want to gain 10 yards every time. Yeah, you still got to have room in the field to be able to drain the clock. Because eventually you get to the end zone and you hand the ball back. You don't want to hand the ball back to the other team. Another handoff to Kurt Taylor Jr. Who's able to punch it forward a yard short of the first down. But that's good because all they need is one more yard before they get three more plays. Jamal Thompson having a career day today. Uh, six tackles, a tackle for a loss, a sack, two interceptions, and a pick six. Demetrius Fleming motioning out to the left. And off to Day Day Guest, who gets the first down. It didn't look like he was going to get it at first, but... That's he... the game, folks. Day Day Guest knows it. And he's strutting. I almost looked like he was going to spike it there. It <laughs> yeah. was like, easy, buddy. It's not a touchdown. That's a first down for Day Day Guest. And Golden Eagle fans can rest easy knowing that we will go undefeated in OVC play. 
36. Pl clock winding down. They're going to take it to about 32, 22 seconds left in the game before they snap this ball. And off to Day Day Gist, who's rushing who's forward. Leaping. And he's is got the first down. He's still going. Touchdown, touchdown, Golden Eagles! A 20 yard touchdown run by Day Day Gist takes us over 50 points today. With 18 seconds left in the game, all you needed to do was run the clock out, but Day Day Gist wanted something more. Great blocking by Trevor Stevens, allowing Day Day Gist to have a lane to the end zone. And so here comes Luke Maynard and Willie Miller to tack on the extra point. <laughs> can you believe it? I I can, you know. This t Tennessee Tech offense is can be explosive at times. The, I, I maybe wouldn't have gone with a touchdown there. I would have maybe continued to drain the clock, but yeah. it's a touchdown. You know, you see it. Day Day Guest, I, I'm sure once he got past the first down marker, he thought, I could slide down right here. Then he said no. And then he's like, no, the, the end zone's right there, you know. It's like, do, do I want to... The, the, there's a certain point where you're like, I need highlights. I need a resume. I need people to draft me. So, But you also don't want it to hurt your team. Now, in this, right. is, in this situation, it's not going to hurt your team. Uh, but it always pays to be a team player. Oh, a muffed kick. He picks it up, and he runs it out to the 23 before he's brought okay. down. On the uh, Xavier team. Washington. It's going to be clipping on the receiving team. Half the distance from the spot of the on the foul. fullback. So that'll start the drive at the 10 with 15 seconds right. left in this game. Golden Eagles are up 52 to 20. Wasn't that the score of our first game of the season? I think so, against Sanford? Yeah. Hot, hot. 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 So the quarterback oh. takes the ball, play action to the wide receiver who he throws it to. They who say no. Yeah, who loses two yards. Simo will take a timeout. I don't know why. You know you've lost this game. Yeah. I, well, the only, I mean, I mean, I think they still have a chance. The only thing they need to do is go down the field, score a touchdown, get a two-point conversion, kick an onside kick, score another touchdown. They need to score a touchdown on the kickoff. So, a lot needs to go right for Simo. And <laughs> everything needs to go wrong for the Golden Eagles. This handoff to the halfback. Will barely get across the line, and they take another timeout. Please, I want to go home. It's <laughs> it's starting to get cold here. I'm sure the Golden Eagles want to get off the field. This crowd wants to go home. I, you saw the Semo fans are leaving. Why are you keeping this game going? I think they're mad because Day Day Giz got that touchdown, so they're making the Golden Eagles stay on the field. And this will be the last play as the quarterback goes deep for a deep ball. ball. And it's... Oh, oh no! It's not intercepted. The Tennessee Tech secondary is playing pinball with it. <laughs> I saw that. I saw it. A man falling off the bleachers. Well, everybody, that will be the end of the game. Your Golden Eagles have a final score of 52-20 to over the Red Hawks from Southeast Missouri. Great game on all aspects of the ball. Jared Howe had a slow day on special teams, but, you know, he got there eventually with that pick six return. Yeah, absolutely. This What this was was just a revenge uh, away trip to southeast Missouri to just kick their tails, and we, and we did. We crushed them. <laughs> and so that's going to be a great ride home back for the Golden Eagles as next week they prepare to face our rivals, the Tennessee State Tigers. So that will be the first game in the series for the Alvin C. York Trophy, which is a trophy given to the winners of OVC teams um, between Tennessee Tech, Austin P, TSU, UT Martin, all the Tennessee teams, they fight for the Alvin C. York Trophy. So this will be the first game for Tech in that series. Whoever has the most wins amongst the team gets to take home the trophy. 
If it's a tie, it goes to the previous winner. That's how the rules work, but we'll see how they do next week against TSU. Your Golden Eagles will be going home victorious with a 52-20 win over the Red Hawks in this presentation of the Ohio Valley Conference. For everybody here, I am Tech Man. And I'm Ashton Nicholson. Telling you all to get some rest, have a good night, and keep your wings up, Golden Eagles.